Hi kids, welcome to another edition of Edgewater's Children's Church. Today we're going to continue on with the Lord's Prayer and talk about the second petition, which says, Thy kingdom come. But first, we want you to get up, we want you to get on your feet, and we want you to get ready to move. Here you go. Enjoy the song. We'll talk to you on the other side. kids welcome back now uh, we're gonna move on and now we have a little doodly that talks about the second petition and what it means so enjoy this one and get ready to uh, learn about our lesson today here you go thy kingdom come what does this mean the kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer but we pray in this petition that it may come to us also how does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us His Holy Spirit, so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little doodly on the second petition. Now, let's start with our lesson. Over the past few weeks, we have been learning about how important prayer is and about a prayer Jesus taught His disciples. 
Who remembers what that prayer is called? That's right, it's the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a good example of a prayer full of many things we should be praying for. That's why we are working to memorize it bit by bit. So far, we have memorized our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Today, we're going to add a little piece of the prayer, and we have it memorized by next week. The next part of the Lord's Prayer we will be memorizing is, Thy Kingdom Come. It's called the Second Petition. We will spend the rest of our lesson discussing what Thy Kingdom Come means. We will talk about what God's kingdom is like and why we want it to come soon. Then we will talk about how we become citizens of God's kingdom. The Bible has quite a bit to say about God's kingdom. Psalms 145.13 Part A says, For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Now, hmm, what do you think everlasting means? Hey, you're right. Everlasting means it will last forever. When you study ancient history, you will find that many kingdoms have come and gone. There was a time when the Roman Empire ruled the known world, and today Rome is just a city in Italy. Remember the story of Daniel, the guy who got thrown down into the lion's den because he would not stop praying to God? He lived in a place called Babylon. Babylon used to be the biggest city in the world. Now you can't even find it on a map. Over time, every kingdom or country comes and goes. Eventually, just becoming a story in a history book. But God's kingdom isn't like that. It has no beginning or end. Heaven will never become just a story in a history book. Heaven will last forever. Before Jesus was crucified... He was arrested and put on trial before a man named Pilate. Now Pilate asked Jesus if Jesus was the king of the Jews because some of the religious leaders of the time were saying Jesus was trying to make himself a king when he shouldn't be a king. Jesus answered in John 18:36, My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. You see, when Jesus was on earth serving others, many people thought he had come to overthrow the unjust Roman Empire and set up a Jewish kingdom here on earth. But when Jesus came the first time, he came to save us from our sins. Jesus will come back again someday, and that time he will set up his kingdom of heaven. Jesus is the king of heaven, and when we go to heaven, we will worship him there forever. Isn't that wonderful? Worship him there forever. Now heaven's going to be an exciting place where all the people who have ever loved Jesus will live together and worship him forever. Revelations 21, 3 through 4 says, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Someday we'll get to see God face to face. There will be no more pain or bad things because God will rule heaven. The kingdom of heaven is about Jesus. I can't wait to spend all of forever with him. The very last book of the Bible, Revelation, ends by inviting people to come to Jesus. It says in Revelation twenty-two seventeen, 17, the spirit and the bride say, come. Let everyone who hears say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires drink freely from the water of life. This means anyone can come and worship Jesus in heaven. A few verses later in verse 20, it says, He who is faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, I am coming. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus says in this verse that he will come back someday and welcome everyone who believes in him into his kingdom. 
As Christians, that's exactly what we want. We want the kingdom of Jesus to come soon so we can live forever worshiping him. That's why we say in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. The last thing we'll cover today is how do we get to go to heaven? Does everybody get to go to heaven? I mean, God loves everyone, so doesn't everyone deserve heaven? It is true that God loves everyone, but this does not mean everyone gets to go to heaven. There is only one way to get into heaven, through Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 through 10 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. The only way to go to heaven is to believe that Jesus Christ came to earth to die in our place for our sins and that God raised him from the dead. We have to confess that we are sinners saved by Jesus and not be embarrassed by that, to live with him forever in his kingdom. That's right. God's kingdom is going to be a place of happiness and love. Think about a birthday party or Christmas or Thanksgiving dinner. We get excited for and look forward to these things all year long. Because they are good things to look forward to. But we have something even better to look forward to, kids. Spending forever with Jesus in heaven. Heaven is going to be like one big celebration. So God, may your kingdom come soon. Now let us pray and repeat after me. We thank you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have allowed us to come together today to learn more about your kingdom. We pray that your kingdom come soon so that we may spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Praise God.